Thank you. So when we look at the, um, the Africa uh, results for climate scope, um, as I've already mentioned, we, we have South Africa, Kenya, and Uganda in the global top 10. Um, now, South Africa is really a story which I, I expect most of you are aware of, um, which is the, uh, the extraordinary and kind of globally significant um, investment flows that the, uh, the country's auction program has attracted um, for the last four years. Um, so in some ways, no surprise that it's up there, as well as being uh, the region's uh, powerhouse, uh, no pun intended. Um, Kenya and Uganda are interesting cases in that um, a large part of their results um, are around the, the wider business environment and the value chains present in both countries, um, as well as a selection of incentives. Um, so Kenya has had a feed-in tariff in place for, for a long time. Um, it has been remarkably unsuccessful in, um, in, in leading to investment in solar. Um, the, the pricing just has not been um, adequate as yet. Um, but it has meant that developers have taken an early interest in Kenya. Um, Kenya was one of the countries that saw um, the earliest investment in clean energy more widely um, with investments particularly in the geothermal sector um, over several years before the, the South Africa story really got going. Um, part of Uganda's um, score, in, interestingly, is around the, um, the distributed energy framework. Um, so some of you may be aware of a program that the country's been running called Get Fit, um, which is essentially an attempt to, um, to make the feed-in tariff attractive um, and, and kind of have it topped up. Um, and this has led to a couple of um, relatively small solar projects being uh, winning, um, winning bids um, through that program, uh, and we expect further build-outs uh, in Uganda. Um, just a, a couple of other notable mentions and, and why uh, they, they scored highly in climate scope. Nigeria um, has actually seen very little clean energy investment, but its score did partly um, reflect um, an increase on a very low base um, with a couple of deals in 2014. Um, but more generally, Nigeria has been the site of, uh, the, the, I'd say, the largest recent power sector liberalization program, um, and we'll come back to that. Um, shortly. Um, Rwanda is a very small country but one with very large ambitions for clean energy. Um, it also currently hosts, I, I believe it's still the largest um, PV plant for sub-Saharan Africa outside of South Africa, um, which is, to be honest, it's only eight and a half megawatts. Um, so that gives us a sense of sort of um, not, not seeing so much else come through outside of South Africa but nonetheless um, still ranking highly. And then Tanzania, the last for kind of an honorable mention, um, fascinatingly, a big part of Tanzania's score comes from the distributed uh, regulatory framework for small projects and for mini grids. So it's a country that took a very early lead in attempting to streamline the processes for developers. Now, the, the business environment in Tanzania is, is not particularly easy, and particularly the um, non-payment by the utility has been an issue. Um, but nonetheless, those regulatory frameworks are in place. So as we've mentioned, the, the investment in South Africa has been quite remarkable and put it on the map globally. Um, where we saw just over $5 billion investment in clean energy in sub-Saharan Africa in 2015, um, the bulk of that in South Africa, and indeed South Africa makes up around three quarters of all the clean energy investment we've seen in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa since 2012. Um, bit of a slowdown in 2014, um, and that was really related to the delay um, on financial close of round three bids. Um, in, in South Africa. So we saw a kind of a surge again in 2015, um, which was a lot of those projects coming through to financial close. When we look at this investment picture um, for solar and, uh, and break it down by sector, um, we really see solar um, making up, again, the majority of investments in, in, in Africa, um, so up to almost 60%. Um, again, that's really the South Africa story. Um, so some of the biggest deals in South Africa being both in PV, um, also solar thermal. Um, and intriguingly, South Africa is one of the last few large markets for solar thermal currently. And where does this bring us now? Um, 
it takes us to a, a situation where um, all of sub-Saharan Africa's power capacity is, is, is under 90 gigawatts, um, 45 gigawatts of that is South Africa, um, the vast majority of South Africa's capacity is coal and indeed South Africa accounts for almost all of sub-Saharan Africa's um, just shy of 40 gigawatts of coal. Um, we're actually, as of the end of, of 2015, um, we're up to a, a bit over 3 gigawatts of solar um, for sub-Saharan Africa as a total. Um, again, outside of South Africa, um, very few utility-scale projects, um, though a number of significant pipelines. One of the aspects of ClimateScope that I think is particularly um, revealing for Africa um, is what I mentioned about uh, our analysis on the power sector structure. Um, so for us, this is part of the enabling framework, um, the general idea being that more liberalized power sectors are more conducive to the, the participation of IPPs and private sector investment. Um, when we look at African countries in general, um, we see very low scores for, for liberalization as a whole. Um, you can see Nigeria there and Cote d'Ivoire, kind of the, the exceptions. Um, one of the notable features is that the countries in Africa that have succeeded in attracting clean energy investment um, are not necessarily those with the most open power sectors. Um, and I think this, this poses some, some very interesting questions around the kind of necessary and sufficient levels of liberalization um, to allow investors to participate. Um, so South Africa um, is fundamentally not a, a, a well-liberalized power sector and that's what you can see here. We've just mapped out um, what that power, power sector structure looks like um, and we're now getting the, the addition of independent power producers um, really for the first time in any significant way. Um, and for solar that's been very significant. So 2014 um, the top three deals we saw for, for South Africa were all in PV um, in fact, for, for 2015, um, they were largely solar thermal, so some e even larger, uh, I mean, monster deals uh, for solar thermal uh, last year as well. And I did also just want to touch on uh, off-grid solar. Um, this comprises part of climate scope. Um, it's also a, an area that we're, um, we're increasingly interested in. Um, so we've tracked the investments in off-grid solar uh, lantern and home system companies. Um, these tend to be startups that have not been operating for, for many years, um, but are, are beginning to find increased traction in sales. Um, so we see around sales of, of kind of cumulatively around 20 million um, solar devices in uh, Africa and Asia so far. Um, and we, we've seen investment over just over a half a billion dollars um, in the companies involved in this growing market. Um, now, of kind of particular relevance here um, is that uh, a majority of, those, of that investment is now in pay-as-you-go solar companies. So we're beginning to see a, a kind of a real traction um, in answering some of the energy access questions um, through small-scale solar. Um, and the application of those techn technologies um, through pay-as-you-go um, involving mobile money. Um, and then we're seeing the reflection of that on the investor side um, with these companies uh, becoming increasingly investable. And we're just seeing the start of a new breed of deals um, where uh, the, the pay-as-you-go solar companies that have a high demand for um, working capital debt um, and to finance their pay-as-you-go offerings through consumer finance um, are, are, are just starting new kinds of debt structures um, that we see as a potential avenue for, for investors in the future as well. So it's a space we'll be keeping a close eye on. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Lillian um, for a bit of Latin American insight. <laughs> 